So this is our VPC console and as you can see we have the my VPC demo that is our demo VPC that we had created last time and here we have subnets and we have two subnets for our new VPC that is private and public and if you have been following the series then you know that we have a public subnet which is attached to our internet gateway that is why we are able to access the instances and on EC2 I have hosted an instance here on my subnet on my public subnet that I have so this is the public subnet I had and this is the VPC ID my VPC demo and that instance can be accessed by me publicly so what I can do I can just copy the public IPv4 address and I can just paste it so this is the output that I'm getting right now from the instance I have set up an Nginx server I think everyone has already seen the video where I have set up the Nginx server if you haven't then please go back in time and check the video out so that we can have an instance like this so if you go to the vpc console you can go to either security and go to network acls or you can as well go to your vpcs and click on your vpc and you can just click on this vpc id and you will see the network acl here so this is the one that is attached to your vpc if you click on this you will see the subnet association so this will be both for your private and public subnet that i have created and here you will find the inbound rules so this is the default inbound rule and you have the rule number 100 which allows all type of traffic all protocols all port ranges or any ip that we have and it allows everything and star so other than that other than this rule if anything that comes i know that it won't come then it will deny that and in the outbound rule we have the same like 100 for all traffic that allows it and we have a star that actually denies it so we have a matching inbound and outbound rule that is why it works and if i refresh this i am able to connect to the instance and if you want to see the security group that i have for this instance i have everything allowed like port 80 and port 22 anyone can access it from any public ip so this should not be a problem for us so there is no restriction from the security group side but we have to restrict some things in our subnet isn't it that is why we are using the network acls so to understand this problem we have to first of all see if suppose i make any changes to the outbound rule the general conviction that we have and what we have understood is that it should not work so i'll edit the outbound rule and i'll change it to custom protocol that i have custom tcp and I'll change it to port 80 because that is one that I'm currently using. So rule number 100, port 80, and just will allow this. So let's save it and let us see if it works. So I have allowed only port 80 and I have denied everything on my outbound rule and the inbound rule, all of them are allowed. So let's see if it works. I'll refresh this. No, it does not. No, it does not work, isn't it? even though our inbound traffic allows all the traffic but it does not match the http 80 port isn't it how is it even possible that is what we learned just now isn't it about the ephemeral ports so if i edit this and i add a rule about like 110 and if i give it a tcp custom tcp rule and if i allow the port number from 32766 to 65400 or any range that I want and I keep it in the allow state and save it we'll see and refresh the page here see it works because this is one of the port ranges from which our operating system is picking up the IP address and the port number and it is forwarding the request so now it is clear that the one who is sending the request is not using the port 80 he is using a ephemeral port so now let's delete this i don't think so we need it right now let's suppose i allow this allow all traffic and i just save it right now so now also it should work because we have both the inbound and outbound rules as equal now let's see what happens if i delete all the rules and save it it will not work obviously and let's suppose i just add a rule for 100 and i just add 
in the ephemeral port range. 32700-65535. Look, and I'll allow this itself. Not even port 80. Save it. Will it work? Yes, it will. So what about your theory about allowing port 80 then? Which is basically what the security group is allowing right now, isn't it? So that is the same reason why we have to understand the importance of the ephemeral port range. So even though I haven't allowed any outbound rules and the inbound rule allows all traffic and the outbound rule does not even allow port 80, it still works. So what if I edit this inbound rule and I just change it to custom TCP that I have and I mark it as 32700 to 65535. Will it work? Let's see. No, it doesn't. You know why? What happened here? Because the incoming traffic has to allow for port 80 because that is the one that we have as the destination port. So this is what we saw here. The destination IP was 42.1.2.10 but the destination port had to be allowed because it was 443. That is what we wanted to access which was our destination. But having the source port at 32770 that had to be allowed from the outbound because that is our destination port for the server that is going to serve the request. So even though we did not have a source port in the response or the outbound traffic, it does not matter. But it has to be there in the inbound traffic or the one that has to make the request. So here if I will just go back and edit it to HTTPS 80 and I will just save it, it works. Okay, so I hope you got the idea. This is very interesting because you can try a whole set of permutations and combination and try yourself on how actually you can trick network ACLs and play around with it. I can have n number of rules that I want but it is a maximum of 20 but you can increase it to 40 so it doesn't matter but this is actually how you play with the network ACLs and this is the main network ACL. I haven't created a new one as of now. I'm using the same the main ACL that has come by default with the VPC. But if I have to create one, then I can just click on create network ACL and I can give a name tag to this my, my new NACL and I can just attach it to one of the VPCs so and I can create one. So this is the one that I created just now and by default, if you see, it comes with all deny. But the default one actually comes, so we'll see the default one, default one actually comes with everything one allow and one deny. If you create a custom one, the first rule that you see here is all deny. So now let's check some of the differences between the network ACLs and the security groups. The first and foremost important difference is that security groups actually operate at the instance level and network ACLs operate at the subnet level. So this is quite most important because you have to understand this very carefully that whenever we have a question related to securing our subnets then you have to understand that we have to talk about network ACLs and if we want to secure the instance at the instance level then we must talk about the security groups. There are various other ways but I'm talking in perspective of what we are discussing right now. And security groups actually support allow rules only because you make a rule that you want to grant access like for SSH or HTTP and there is no option to have deny as a rule in security groups. But for network ACLs uh, actually they support both allow rules and deny rules as we just saw right now and security group it is stateful. So the return traffic is automatically allowed regardless of any rules. And in network ACLs, it is stateless. So for that reason, return traffic must be explicitly allowed by the rules, as we saw. And security groups, actually, we evaluate all rules before deciding whether to allow traffic or not. And in the network ACLs, we process rules in order, starting with the lowest numbered rule when deciding whether to allow traffic, because you can have multiple rules with the same set of protocols, but with different rule numbers. And security groups actually applies to an instance only if someone specifies the security group when launching the instance or associates the security group with the instance later on. So you can attach a security group when you're creating it 
and you can allow one of the rules that you want or you can specify it after you have created also if you already have some security groups you can attach them after you have created the instance as well the network ACL actually automatically applies to all instances in the subnet that it's associated with and therefore it provides an additional layer of defense in the security group rules that are too permissive that are too open in other words so now let's create the replica of the example that we saw at that time so i'll just add some of the inbound rules now So now I have added the inbound rule and the outbound rules. Refresh this page. It will obviously work because it is connecting. So what happens here is it will first check whether the 100 number rule actually matches or not. If not, then it comes to 110 and then it comes to 120, then 130 and that actually finds a match for port 80. And here, even if I don't give 32455 it will work but i have given it so not a problem so when you go back to the outbound rules it will match here for the hundredth uh, rule number it will check there is no match then it will come back to 110 and it will see that yeah it is a match but that's not the port number that i am trying to access so i'll go ahead and and i'll check the rule number 120 that we have the custom tcp rule then it will check the port range and yes uh, yeah we have this port number that i want to access isn't it so that is the one that will allow it so that is why it works so that is why it is termed as lowest order rule that is why it checks 100 then 110 then 120 then 130 then 140 and just like that it goes to star